We're exploring the Queen City. They've got everything. So I thought this would be an interesting way to take you to lunch. Traveling while intoxicated. I won't tell. It's overload in here. I feel like I'm on the strip. This is a great way to go from Kentucky yeah. to Ohio. I'm eating beans. <laughs> I'm not sharing this with anyone. <laughs>
Cincinnati is surrounded by quaint little historic towns. We happen to be by Milford, and that's where we started day two. Once we got there, we met Mark from Loveland Paddle Sports, and he told us all about our trek on the Little Miami River. We're near downtown Milford, and we're on the historic Little Miami River. So this was Ohio's first wild and national scenic river. It's a beautiful river, so you're gonna have a great time on the water today. I love the leaves falling on the water. So I thought this would be an interesting way to take you to lunch. What do you think? Oh, you're gonna make me work for my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we keep paddling down the Little Miami River, it takes us to the Ohio River through Cincinnati, and we can meet up with the Mississippi if you want. Well, that's probably a little overdoing it. <laughs> so I think I'll just take a stop here in little downtown Milford and check out this little town. It is really amazing how many people come out in from this general area and say, I never knew this was here. So we have the bike trail that runs along the river. This is an old railroad. And then you've got the river itself that create a great opportunity for people to get outdoors and to get some nature therapy, as we call it. We got a couple of Ohio's Oh, there goes one of them jumped in. I see three of them. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh, there goes another one. Ah. They're enjoying the day just as much as we oh, are. Look at this river. But like you said, I don't feel like I'm near a big city. No, this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the colors starting to change I on the trees. Yeah. It's a great place if you're a fisherman, if you like to kayak, if you want to come and skip rocks, look for fossils. This river has it all. So the brewery's right up here, so let's just pull in right here on the bank. All right, let's beach it. Pulled over on the side, and there was the Little Miami Brewing Company, and we were ready for lunch. Hey, how you doing? Good. How's everything going here? It's the brewmaster. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Tell me about the brewery. How long has it been here? We've been here almost six years, and uh, we started from the ground up. Awesome site right on the river, right on the bike path, and it's been amazing. I'm from here. I started brewing in Cincinnati here. We had our Cincinnati's first brew pub in 95. You live right up right the hill. Right up the hill, yep. This really is a local, as you can get, local spot. Full circle beer trip. We're actually going to kind of go around the world on the beers here. You have a German Hefeweizen. And that's the pterodactyl. The pterodactyl Hefeweizen. There's, you know, 200 kinds of yeast we could use, and that one produces the estuary, clovey, banana type. That is a flavor. delicious mouthful. Wow, the, the ending, I do taste that banana now that he mentioned it. I don't it. taste the banana at all. I right at the clove. end. Some people get the clove. Yeah. yeah. All right, number two here, what do we have here? That's an American wheat that we actually add peaches to. So that's our 71 peaches. That is a lot of peach, Jim. And that is one of our most popular beers by far. We have very seasonal beers, much like our next beer, the campfire on there, which is our smoked beer. That has smoked barley in it. So you actually take the barley, the grain that we make the beer with, wow. and it's wood smoked. And yeah. I can taste that. It's almost like a smoked meat almost. You it's know, called, very much so. Some yeah. people call it bacon beer. There you go. But <laughs> historically, before steam and gas, people would dry their grain with wood. All right, and our stout here. Our stout. That's our St. James Irish stout. Mm. The yeast comes from a famous Irish stout. Really? Uh, made at the St. Oh, James man, Brewery. Oh, no, that's me. So this is truly around the world. We've gone in different... Germany, America, American, even German, history. and back to uh, Ireland. Ireland. I could talk about beer all day long. We but, still uh, have to paddle back, so I don't know <laughs> if there's laws against paddling while intoxicated. I won't, I won't tell. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. The Cincinnati area has got it going on. Thanks, Brewmaster. Mm. So we woke up on day three to the familiar sound of rain on the top of the RV. Which I really like sleeping into, but when you want to go out and explore outside, 
You can't. You gotta take it in. Looks like we're gonna need our rain gear, Kev. You ready to go? Yep. So we jumped in the toad, took a short drive through Cincinnati for a unique place, the American Sign Museum. Oh, look at this place. What is this place? This is like sign overload. Check it out. I'm going this way. All right, I'm going this way. God, look at the neon. There you are. Kevin. <laughs> Look at this place. I know. Post-World War II neon. <laughs> I mean, some of these I remember as kids seeing these yeah. signs. And look, I picked this up. It's a self-guided tour, oh. and it's got a QR code app. Oh, OK. We obviously are a sign museum. We have a lot of signs, I think over 600 or so. But we don't only have signs. We have anything related to sign making. As we acquire signs, they become my favorite, maybe momentarily or temporarily. I particularly like the era 1900 to late 20s. As far as electric signs, that's called a light bulb period. The Regal Boot, circa 1910. 1910. And notice you can hear it. Yeah. The old light bulbs are turning on and off, so you can hear that. That's fantastic. Oh, look at this. My goodness. It might be raining and gloomy outside, but it's bright in here. Big Howard Johnson sign um, came out of upstate New York around 1958. This is before Ronald McDonald <laughs> yeah. was even invented. Man, such nostalgia. He's a speedy, such fast food. He's running. <laughs> Oftentimes, it's the history behind the sign that makes it most interesting to me. But the memory of that sign of that family business for generations is preserved forever here through the sign. Oh, this was what you were smelling, Kev. Oh, I am ready. When you said, let's drink by the campfire, I thought, OK, I've got to celebrate the season. So we've got something a little autumnal, and I'm going to bring out the flavors of the whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Amy. Here's to campfire in a glass right here. This. It looks beautiful. Isn't that delicious? That's my kind of drink. Oh, apple. I know, and wow. just that rosemary makes it smell like Absolutely. evergreen, like you're outside. You kind of fiddle with it. Kevin, Amy is our beeline expert, bourbon know-it-all. <laughs> can make a great drink, I can tell you that. <laughs> and new best campfire buddy. <laughs> I'm not going home. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of room. We got room for you. So tell us about the Beeline. We've not heard of this. It's hard to believe that just about 30 minutes from here at East Fork State Park is bourbon country, right across the Ohio River. And the Ohio River is actually what makes the Beeline the Beeline. It's that line okay. you got across okay. to get into bourbon country. Okay. And in northern Kentucky, we have our own self-guided tour of bourbon distilleries that are in our region. We've got some amazing distilleries, seven at this point. One of the oldest is Old Pogue Distillery. It was the third licensed distillery in the state. 20 minutes away, we've got brand new Augusta Distillery, which was just built about a year ago. So we've got this real gamut of bourbon experiences. That caramel apple drink was delicious, but now I'm hungry. Good thing I've got Cincinnati chili. This is not going to be pretty. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's really good. Really That's good. really tasty, Patrice. Did I do it right? You yeah. did it right. Isn't that weird? I really want to eat some of the it's chili so just good. by itself. <laughs> it's weird. Mm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I taste the cinnamon. So there's cinnamon and allspice and clove and chocolate. Chocolate. And it is a beloved food in Cincinnati. I think the bourbon goes perfectly with the chili. I need to wipe my face. <laughs> Sorry. Chili cheers <laughs> and bourbon cheers. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. What a fun night. You can come camping anytime. <laughs>
I was very excited about day four. We were going into downtown Cincinnati. You had the electric bikes ready for us, and we were going to learn more history, but it was history through food. So I thought it would be a perfect way for us today to see Cincinnati and the activity we have planned is to ride over on our electric bikes. I love it. This is a great way to go from Kentucky yeah. to Ohio, cross the Ohio River. So this is called the Purple People Bridge. It was named that in 2022, but it was built in 1872 as a railroad bridge. Very cool. I love that they repurposed it. What a way to see Cincinnati. And we're heading into Finley Market, right into downtown. So once we got into downtown Cincinnati, we headed into Finley Market. It was really cool seeing all the colorful buildings there in downtown. And once we got there, we met Barb Cooper from Cincinnati Food Tours. We are a full-time public market. We have about 50 full-time local businesses here. Definitely the best place in the Cincinnati area to shop local. We are made up of people that have been here two or three generations, legacy vendors, plus now a whole new breed of food entrepreneurs that have brought food from around the world. That's Sounds fantastic. Sounds like my kind of place yeah. to show us around. Come on in, let's go. Sarah Dworak runs the Babushka Pierogi business, and Sarah started in the Finley Kitchen. She actually began making her Ukrainian style pierogies there. Mm, wow. The flavor so profile, like, there's like yeah, all kinds of Julie flavors. flavors going on. Yes. I do not know that that's meatless. It's lentils. That's You're lentils? lentils? I'm eating beans? <laughs> I think it's really cool that you married mm. the Cincinnati culture and the Ukrainian yes. culture mm. in one bite. In one bite, yes. And he's just mm, over here. After we went to Babushka Pierogies, we did travel to Eckerlin Meats, the butcher shop that's been here since the beginning of Finley Market, sixth generation, and that's where you tasted great grandma's recipe for their German-based getta. We'll take out the scraps and the mystery meats of grandma's recipe and we'll put in whole protein. So all your pork shoulders and beef chucks are going in here. Mmm. That's wonderful. Yes. And you yes. won't find it if you go very far from Cincinnati. This is local food. This is <laughs> a whole new generation. Yes, we do take <laughs> a lot of pride in this getta here. Definitely a Cincinnati staple, definitely a German staple. Our third stop, Maker's Bakers. Kevin and Tara grew their business from the Finley Kitchen as well. So we were both the top 10 bakery in the city two years in a row, and we're known for our banana pudding, cheesecake, key lime pie, and our old-fashioned cinnamon rolls. Today, you guys are going to have some of our banana pudding. Oh, nice. yeah. So just give that a taste and tell me what you think. That's incredible. Oh, thank you. Seriously. So much. That's Whoa. the best banana pudding I've ever had. Same. <laughs> I would normally share this. I'm not sharing it. <laughs> anyway. Mama slapping, lips smacking, no sharing. My, 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 good. Yeah. Here's to you, bud. Cheers. Appreciate so it, man. Well Cheers, done. Guys. We go into local restaurants and talk a little food, a little history, a little culture along the way, and really get to know the small businesses that are so crucial to keeping the economy going right here in Cincinnati. Delicious. Kevin, you got a drink? Yes, I do. I'm covered right here. Deal me in. All right. Man, Finley Market was awesome today. I enjoyed that a lot. You ate lentils. And getta. <laughs> Gotta get me some of that. <laughs> so what was your favorite part this week? Oh, man, East Fork State Park. We haven't even scratched the surface. It's huge here. I want to come back and go out in the lake. Yes. I'm going to have to say the Stein Museum. That was really cool. It was funky and cool and different. What was your favorite? For me, it was all the people we met this week here in the Cincinnati region, whether it was the folks at East Fork State Park or the Little Miami Brewing Company, and even Barb Cooper and the folks at Finley Market that we met. All the people that we met this week are fantastic folks. So much to do and see in this whole Cincy region, Northern Kentucky, Claremont County, We've got to come back. It's your turn. Uno. Oh, dang it.